He was allowing the Muslim to come in there and he declared that the state holiday is the month of Ramadan and it's no longer national day of prayer. Christians, you are out. I hear this a lot. Obama has canceled the national day of prayer. Oddly enough, while these people try to convince you that the national day of prayer is so important, they reveal that it's not important enough for them to know that it has not been canceled. Perhaps it would be beneficial to give you a bit of history. In 1952, a bill was unanimously passed by both houses of Congress and signed by President Truman. The bill required that the President must select a day annually for a National Day of Prayer. Notice that the President could select any day that he saw fit. It was not yet set to be one particular day of the year. The following year, President Eisenhower became the first President to select a day under this law. Here we should make two tangents. One, presidents have been declaring days of fasting, prayer, and thanksgiving since our nation's founding. The National Day of Prayer Task Force correctly notes the following. National Days of Prayer have occurred since 1775 when the Continental Congress asked the nation to join in a petition for divine guidance. Since then, 34 of 44 U.S. presidents have called for days of prayer during times of crisis, including George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, George H.W. Bush, and George W. Bush. This has been the tradition of our nation from its founding. Ten of our presidents never called for days of prayer. I am curious as to who the ten were. The National Day of Prayer was signed into law by our 33rd president, President Harry Truman. So every president since 1953 has called for a day of prayer at least once a year. Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, and Obama. That's 11 of our 44 presidents. Now we have 33 presidents left. It is 10 out of 33, or basically a little less than one third. My point is that while 23 is more than 10, there is a sizable minority that did not call for days of prayer before the National Day of Prayer was codified into law by Congress. The scales are not as weighted as they appear. Second, in 1953, Eisenhower attended what was then known as the Representatives Prayer Breakfast. Since then, every sitting president has attended this annual prayer breakfast organized by the Fellowship Foundation. In 1970, the name was changed from the President's Prayer Breakfast to the National Prayer Breakfast. Without congressional incentive, this prayer breakfast has been patronized by our presidents for 60 years. Okay, let's get back to uh, the National Day of Prayer. In 1974, the National Prayer Committee was created. A nonprofit Christian evangelical organization, they created the National Day of Prayer Task Force as a project. Remember, at this point, the National Day of Prayer can be any day of the year. In 1981, they began organizing with the Reagan White House to coordinate a National Day of Prayer observance. They must coordinate because the president designates the day, and it could be, again, any day uh, in the year. In 1982, Reagan held the White House first National Day of Prayer ceremony. In 1983, the first National Day of Prayer observance is held at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. In 1986, they began to lobby Congress to get the National Day of Prayer set on a specific day of the year. The goal of the National Day of Prayer Task Force is to organize events for the National Day of Prayer. An annual designated day would help further this goal. The bill was originally introduced in 1987 and signed into law May 8, 1988. The first Thursday of May was designated to be the annual National Day of Prayer. In 1989, uh, Bush held the White House's second National Day of Prayer ceremony. Notice that it had been seven years between the first and the second ceremonies. The third ceremony was held by George W. Bush in 2001. This was the first White House ceremony to be organized by the National Day of Prayer Task Force. Bush continued to hold these ceremonies annually throughout both terms of his presidency. 
which added up to four times all previous presidents combined. Out of the ten ceremonies held by the White House, George W. Bush held 80% of them. When Obama came into the White House in 2009, he chose, like most other presidents, to issue proclamations but not to hold public ceremonies. He has declared every first Thursday of May as the National Day of Prayer, just like every other president since the law was originally passed in 1952. This video is getting long, so I will uh, make another video with my thoughts on the matter.